Hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys today how to make 2D drawings from your 3D models in Rhino. And to do that, I have here a little model that we made for the 3D printing tutorial. And we're gonna use that as the basis to talk about different types of drawings and the kinds of camera setups that you need to have in order to ensure that you are able to export things correctly and that you produce both orthographic drawings and perspectival drawings. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. As you guys can see here, we have this little uh, model that uh, is made up of a bunch of different pieces. And so we'll, I will also take a look at maybe how to draw like an exploded axonometric or some kind of diagram that shows multiple components. Okay, all right. So it, it's actually very, very easy to make drawings out of uh, 3D models in Rhino. And really all you have to do is select a view that you like and type make 2D, okay? When you type make 2D, it's gonna ask you to select the objects that you want to draw. And in that case, you'll select uh, the objects that you want, okay? And then you'll click enter. At this point, it's gonna ask you, it'll bring up this little um, panel here and it will ask you what type of um, information you want to project or make a drawing of. And you guys can see here, we are in the perspective view, right? So that matches up. So we are gonna wanna make, and just leave this the same. We're gonna make a drawing of this view. We wanna maintain our source layers. I think usually that works best, although you can also uh, decide to put this in a different layer. Uh, and I'll let you guys play with that around, right? And then here, it's gonna ask us what kind of line work we want to show. So um, you can play around with this. I'll, I'll briefly just mention that, for example, if you, if you click on hidden lines, you're gonna see all of the line work, including line work that you, for example, wouldn't be able to see because it's behind the object or it's the back part of the object. So as a good starting ground, just let's go ahead and leave all of this the same. We click okay. It processes for a little while. And then you'll see over here that it has made our, our drawing, okay? Now I'm gonna actually go ahead and switch from, from perspectival view to top view, because actually what actually what happens is whenever you choose to make a drawing of an object, what it does is it makes a projection of that onto the ground plane. And so you can see most accurately what that looks like from top view, okay? So this is that, that drawing of that object that we made. It comes all grouped. You can actually uh, ungroup this thing by typing ungroup. And you'll see that it's actually made up of different line segments. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to perspective now. And then you'll see, right, that's a 2D drawing made up of vector line work, okay? So that's really useful if you wanna go ahead and bring this information into uh, different vector line work programs such as Illustrator. And this can form the background of any type of drawing, or if you're making a technical drawing, it can form the, the basis of that technical orthographic drawing, okay? So at a very base level, it's just a single command. So that's very, very useful to know. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and continue now and talk about different types of drawings that we're generating. And that has to do with the type of camera that we set up when we make 2D, okay? So as you can see, right, if I, now that I'm here and I'm gonna actually now go back, switch to top, you'll see I do that a lot, switch back and forth. But if you take a look here, right, if I draw lines that are completely vertical, right, you'll, you'll notice, right, that this, drawing that we made is perspective, it was in a particular perspective, right? Because we have receding lines, right? And so the things that we know that are parallel to each other in the drawing are no longer parallel, right? Now, that means that, and we know that, and that means that did it happen because we were in a perspective, right? So we were looking at the object from a perspective viewport, and therefore the projection that was made out of it was also in perspective, right? Uh, we can we can go actually go ahead and play 
with that perspective, we could we could actually go in and we could set our camera and we could change, we could adjust the length of the um, of the focal length of it so that we actually get a more skewed or less skewed um, camera viewpoint, right? But in any way that we do this, as long as we are looking at it, um, we can go ahead and make another one right here, right? So we'll go ahead and type make 2D, press OK. And again, you'll see we're going to move this one out of the way, right? We're still it creating perspectival projections right now. Okay, very nice. There, it could be great if you want to make like a, a, a view of what this maybe would look like at scale. So we could imagine that a person being yay tall. And then we could imagine maybe this is a, like a little pavilion or something, right? And this would give us the basis of maybe a kind of a rendering or a, a sketch that we want to make for this object, right? So there we go. That, that's what perspective, these perspectives would really help us with that, right? Now, let's say that we want to make a technical drawing, a technical drawing, let's say we want to make an isometric or an axonometric drawing. The first thing we would want to do is go in and we would actually want to go to set view and change, right? Change to an isometric here. And let's say we're going to do this view. Okay, maybe this is not the most interesting view, so I'll, we'll go ahead and change it. Isometric. Maybe that's not the most interesting view either, right? So we just play around until, until we, we, we find the one that we like. That one seems pretty good. Okay, so now you'll notice that when I move around, when I'm in this isometric viewpoint, I actually try to pan. So I try not to rotate. And the reason for that is so that I keep that isometric uh, view without distorting it, right? So it's actually right now drawing this as a 30-30 isometric, okay? Now you'll see this is different. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and make 2D and we'll see why this is different from the perspectival projections. So now that I go here, right? We have that same similar view to what we had uh, done with the perspective, but you'll notice now, right? That our, Vertical lines are perfectly vertical, right? So we are we don't have any distortion of the object because we don't have a perspective. So these are all it's a parallel line drawing, right? And actually, a parallel line drawing can be really useful. For example, if we wanted to make an exploded axonometric. So I'm actually going to explode this, and I'm going to say like you know if if potentially we wanted to make something where we saw these different pieces at different heights, right? So we could talk about how we actually built this object. We could begin to talk about, you know, the, like showing the internal element of it, right? We could begin to explode in multiple directions and we would begin to be able to see very quickly and very clearly how this object, in a, in a way, we could begin to talk about how that object was made, right? And so here, I'm moving these things into their relative correct position. I tend to kind of already know how it works. So we could begin to look at this and, and see how, how it was made, okay? So one last one, right? So we can begin to see there, those are all the components. Maybe we also move this one up and we can begin to talk about how that is. The top of the sphere, right? And so we can, we can now go ahead, grab all of these elements, make 2D, hit okay will have produced an exploded axonometric drawing here, right? And we know that we can actually now go in and draw our little additional, let's say, guidelines, and we can do that, right? And begin to suggest how that would go back together.
in Illustrator or in whatever other program we decide to use, right? So we can, once we've done this, we can also use this to trim, for example, right? And begin to sort of give a sense of how some of this information lines back up, right? There we go. Okay, so that gives you a sense of the different ways in which we can output, uh, and it's all vector line work, and the ways in which then we could maybe uh, use that vector line work and e export it to another program. So really briefly, right before uh, we end this tutorial, you know, again, to export things, we would select everything, and then we would go to File, Export Selected, select somewhere. In this case, I'm just going to select the desktop. And here, again, I, I find that the best way to export vector line work is to actually save it as a DWG, even if you're going to bring it into Illustrator, because that allows you uh, the most uh, correct um, kind of curvature from the drawing itself, right? So then we would save this as, I'm going to call this axons save and as I mentioned before all, any of these will work I tend to find that R12 works the best so I'm going to click, click OK and now I'm ready to open it in Illustrator okay now I have Illustrator here and I can go to file open go to the desktop and we'll see that somewhere down here we have we should have this file it's going to be a dwg right so axon click ok and again when you open it it's going to ask you if you want to maintain your units uh, i'm going to go ahead and say yes we'll see what happens i actually didn't look at the, the unit scale before we can see here that it did maintain them it's also really really large so i'm going to go ahead and select all and i'm going to go to object transform scale and I'm just going to make it 10% of where it used to be. Okay. And now we're at something that's much closer, much more workable. Okay. So if I now go in to here and I change my artboard, go to document setup, edit artboards, I can make this artboard much, much larger. And then these pieces will all fit into it. Right? So we could imagine that. Here we go. And now we can see here the different types of outputs. And what's really nice about this is, again, because all of this is line work, we can now go back and select specific line work and change its appearance and play with it in, um, in Illustrator. So for example, I could decide that because these are just the lines that inform us of relationships, maybe I'm going to go in and I'll go ahead and make them dash. Right. So we start seeing those as dashed lines, and then I'm going to go ahead and make some of these other line work, maybe the extent line work, a little bit thicker so that it reads a little bit better, right? And such, so on and so forth, until I begin to produce a, a drawing that reads the way that I want it to read. Okay, so that's the, the the really nice thing about making 2D in Rhino is that it gives you very editable line work that you can then manipulate and work off of to make either orthographic drawings as these two or perspectival drawings as these two. All right, so there you go. That's how you make 2D in, from 3D in Rhino and how you take it and then bring it into Illustrator or any other drawing program that uses vector line work. See you guys in the next one.